So we got a new controller and it's from Jumper and it's called T Lite here and it has a lot of features that are missing in other controllers. And the best part of all, this thing's under a hundred bucks. Now, is it good? Well, I've been using it for the past week and I'm ready to give in a initial thought, I guess. And long-term obviously we'll have to wait. But with that being said, let's take a look at our sponsor and we'll get started. PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now, if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCBWay is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. All right, so what are we looking at today? Well, this is the latest offering from Jumper here. Now, Jumper is really starting to make its name. I would put it in the mid-range category of uh, quality. Uh, there are some hits and misses here. However, recently they're stepping up their game, but it still feels like it's in that mid-ish category right here. However, I wish something like this existed when we first started because this thing has so many features that I'll, that's just insane for 75 bucks, really. So let's just get started on the features here. So some of the main features that you have is you have a multi-protocol module built inside. And what does that mean? Well, that means you'll be able to bind the FlySky, FRSky, and a ton of other protocols, even those toy quadcopters, helicopters, cars, whatever. If you figure out what's the name of that protocol, you'll be able to use it, which is really nice. Another thing you need to take into consideration, actually let's do the warnings first. Make sure you install the antenna always before you boot this. There is no security, you will ruin the range. However, one thing I would have wished to see was maybe there is no way to remove the antenna, but probably some people would complain about that because you do have a high probability of ruining this if you do turn it on without an antenna. And it's very important to keep that in mind. They do give you a bunch of warning stickers, but try not to forget. Now, another thing which uh, I found kind of uh, a little bit annoying here was it's very difficult to see which side is the positive, which side is the negative. Now, from all these warning labels, what seems to be is there is no protection feature, so you can possibly fry something if you install your battery backwards. And another thing to take into consideration as well if your battery or your 18650 batteries are flat like mine, they don't have anything that portrays out, what you'll have to do is just uh, grab these little ones and then just uh, extend them slightly and then you'll get really good grip. And that's what I did because I don't want that to happen. So this is the negative side, very difficult to see even on camera. Now because I have a lot of lighting, but there's the plus right there on the right side. So just double check that. Make sure you install it correctly here. Now, if we take a look at the fitment in the plastic, it, it's mid-grade, you know? Look, like you can see this cover right here. This is why I put them in the mid category. Um, but the overall software is well-known software, so they, have, didn't, they didn't create a software from nothing here. They are using OpenTX. Now, let's go ahead and boot this. And once we boot it, what we have is open, just a normal OpenTX that you're used to. The screen is hella tiny, but that's not a big problem. That obviously will increase battery life as well. Now for switches, we have four switches here. We have two two position switches and two three position switches. The, and the default off way is going to be pointing away from you. And if we look up here, we have a USB type C, which also charges the battery, which is really awesome. And you can connect to the simulators from here, which is again, really great. Here we have a port for the buddy flyer or whatever it's called. I've never used it, so I don't know much about it, but they have that there. And we do have SD card expansion here. Now, one thing I can tell you is if you're flying indoors, this is not really a big deal breaker, but I've noticed quite a lot from using it. This green LED is too bright. It, it kind of outshines the screen and it just uh, constantly distracts you. And sometimes it's a bit blinding, especially when there's no light. It's, it's actually pretty blinding. Right now I have like three big ass lights around me and that's why you don't really notice it. But that, that, that LED is really bright. Maybe in a later version, they should kind of dim it down slightly. It is colorful, so you go in different color modes and stuff. We also do have our trims, as you can tell. Now let's talk about the gimbal and the overall use case. So we do have a speaker here. And I've been using it and I'm actually kind of liking it. Now, I don't think it'll be my primary for now due to the gimbal's throw isn't as long as I'd like it to be, but that's not a deal breaker that just comes down to you. So another thing is when I first received it, the gimbals were a bit too loose for the way that I like them. But luckily once I opened it up out, you're able to uh, uh, modify that. So you can uh, increase and reduce the tension on the gimbals on every axis, which is really nice. However, I do miss the notch feeling from FR Sky, but a lot of people recently don't like that, but I kind of just, gotten accustomed to it and I really like it because it feels like it makes me more precise because I could feel those notches when I move the throttle. 
Again, not a deal breaker, but that's something to keep in mind. Now, the writing here will eventually disappear. As you can tell, it's already, you know, it's, it's not of the greatest quality here. And they are using very soft plastic, kind of like the, when the Ionways first came out, if you guys have ever touched those. It's like soft, rubbery plastic. It feels really nice, actually, in the hand. Um, and especially when you start sweating, I don't think it'll be that slippery, even though we don't have any of those anti-slip pads. Now, if you look here, you might see mine looks a bit different than a lot of other people. And this actually came in the package that I had to install myself. And behind this, when, when you first receive it, there's actually a sticker. And if you remove the sticker, there's a hole. And that hole is for uh, the wire of this to go inside and just connect straight to the motherboard. So you'll be able to add a multi-protocol extension here. So the PCB already supports it, but the overall design doesn't come with it. But they have left three holes and three screws, so you can just install it. And now I have a uh, multi-protocol module. I can use R9, I can use a crossfire, I can use whatever the hell I want, which is really really nice so now let's talk about the screen in the menus well it's basically open tx so i'm not really going to go through all of that but you have all the features you ever want and um what's really nice here is we have a forward and a back so if we get into the menu you'd have to hold enter you have you could page up with this and page down with this usually you could only page up and if you hold it it would go back but now we can actually page up and down and go through these so that's kind of nice we have our up and down right here, pretty simple, straightforward. It takes time to get used to. Uh, every every single controller with different kind of button layouts, uh, they usually just take a bit of time to get used to. Nothing major, I don't see any huge flaws here. We also have our trims here. And like I mentioned, we also do have our speaker, which is really awesome, and again, the SD card here. So what's my overall experience with this? Well, I'll actually give this thing an eight out of 10. And for 75 bucks, this is insane. Now, I don't know if this is an extra that comes in the box, but mine came since the review unit. But I have been using this because, again, I'm sick of my X9 Lite. And I went to my X10, which is old on, on the older software before the whole new access bullshit. And I ended up dropping it off the table the other day. And now it just doesn't work, my X10. I tried to fix it, but I just didn't bother. And now I got this one. So I have been using it I basically because I'm sick of my X9 Lite due to software issues. And... Um, I'm actually starting to really like this. However, usually anything, any controller under hundred bucks usually turns out pretty crappy, like really crappy. Like the gimbals are crappy. You can barely do anything with. It's really hard to explain, but trust me, you, you don't want to use this. It does affect your flying. However, what they've done here is they just set a new benchmark. This is the best controller under a hundred bucks, which is insane. It's seventy-five dollars. That is insane. You have charging capabilities, USB Type C. You have uh, multi-protocol module support, eighteen six fifties, Open TX. What else do you need? Uh, maybe you pop might need more switches, but for FPV, this is way more than enough. Even with the whole new LR scene. Uh, this should do the job just fine. Now, range, what could we expect out of range? Well, what we could expect is anything like any other multi-protocol module. So um, in that aspect, they didn't have to basically reinvent the wheel. They just use what's already in the market and everybody's using. So in that aspect, you kind of feel a bit safe. And again, the software is something well known and it's on just about every other controller we use, about 80% of the controllers out there. So would I recommend this? Well, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know if you guys noticed, I have been very hesitant to recommend anything recently. But so far, just from about a week perspective or a week of use every day, I have used this every day and on simulator time, I did enjoy it. It didn't hinder my performance. It didn't do anything weird. And it was just a nice overall cheap. I don't know. I can't. I don't know. Should we call it cheap? But we could see a budget controller. This is the X9 light killer in every single way, except full fledged gimbals. You have hall effects. You have all the top features in here. You know, even the X9 Lite doesn't charge batteries. You have to do some mods to it, unless the new ones came out where that's already built in. So Jumper is on the right track, and I'm giving them about a year, and I think they might take over the market if they keep this up and they don't get greedy. And um, yeah, some of the things it comes with, sorry about that, forgot about that, the antenna, USB Type-C, and the 18650 little baggie here. So you could put your 18650s inside. You could put up to two. Uh, you could put one here and one here, and that's really nice. They didn't have to do that, but they did give that to you. And well, that's really it, guys. Everything is linked down below. This is a really nice controller. If you're looking for a budget controller or you're getting started uh, for some sim time, this is an absolute steal for 75 bucks. Good luck finding it in stock. All of them will be linked down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.